Hello artists, today is a long video. I will show you some new stuff that I got, I show you what I've been working on, and I will swatch my favorite acrylic inks at the moment. So if you would like to see that, grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. I don't think there's a better way to start the day <laughs> than with a package. This is white acrylic gouache. If you're not familiar, these are Japanese. They are very similar to the Holbein acrylic gouache. They come in a ton of colors and this is just matte acrylic paint. So it's not traditional gouache. Traditional gouache is water soluble. It's like more of a chalky watercolor type of medium. So this is kind of a restock because I'm freaked out that I will run out of this color. This is fluorescent magenta and you can see, I think the color, this is from Golden and I love the high flow. I think they also have this in like heavy body, probably also liquid, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the liquid paint and I really, really like the high flow acrylics. I can show you how it looks. And I haven't been able to find a uh, pink that is, you want to shake these before, but this is, I don't want to use too much <laughs> because I'm very precious about this. <laughs> but this is just a beautiful, beautiful bright pink that is not so, so uh, garish like the opera paints or sometimes other fluorescent pinks. So for example, this one is usually kind of a bit more what you see as a fluorescent pink, although this one is also good. But there are some that are really, really garish in my opinion. You, you can see this one is a little bit warmer, lighter. This one is quite cool, I would say, or a bit more bluish than this. This is from Flash Paints. I love, love, love the formula. And this one is also great. I use it a lot. But yeah, if you want like a really bright magenta fluorescent color, then I absolutely love this one from Golden. I'm completely, completely obsessed with it. And uh, I have the same situation in watercolors. Once I find a pink that I like, all of the other like regular pinks just pale in comparison. Like literally, they look so sad to me. Uh, and so they had, I think they had a sale on these, so I got uh, a larger bottle. They have even larger ones, but I think this will be okay. And then I also wanted to try, for some reason, I don't actually have lavender color in ink. I use this color a lot, all the time, in watercolors and also in acrylics and also in gouache. This, I think, is one of their new colors from Golden. They have a few new colors. They look very, very nice. Uh, this is light ultramarine blue. Now this is a total, total convenience color. You can mix this, you can buy a bottle and mix this yourself. Um, but I just use this particular color a lot. Again, from Flash, I have a very similar shade. It's called Royal Blue. A lot of companies make this color. It's basically ultramarine and white. So it's really the easiest color to make. This one, you can see, it is half opaque. Uh, they tend to be. You can also see with the golden colors, it's very easy. So you see, if it's like transparent, you'll see on the swatch here, and then if it's opaque or a little bit more opaque, then you won't see these black lines. Let's see how this color looks. Probably I should do this on white paper, but <laughs> that's no fun. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like I hoped. Uh, I don't have this color in ink. I have just like ultramarine blue, which I use a lot, but I almost always also mix it with white. So I wanted to make life easier for me. And this is really beautiful. So love it. Super happy. These are crazy expensive, but unlike um, heavy heavy body paint, I don't go through so much of high flow um, acrylics. And so 
I thought it's for me it's like worth the investment if I went through a bottle like this in a very short time I I would try to find other solutions that are more cost effective so let's just look how this looks I'm not expecting anything too exciting except white I think what I saw Sandy Hester doing with this I think she kind of used it um, as almost like an eraser or something in sketchbooks you kind of can use it and then basically you have uh, a clean plate okay this is a little bit dirty but yeah it's white it's white acrylic paint uh, with a matte finish that's why it's called gouache okay so this one is actual gouache this is also this is a sandy hester inspired little haul with some things that snuck into my cart so this color is pale rose blush this is how it looks i really like the windsor and newton uh, gouache this is traditional gouache meaning it will rewet it is not permanent when dry how stupid is it to swatch colors on a colorful <laughs> okay wait i'll bring a white i mean it looks so much cuter right <laughs> that is so boring so let's start with the gouache so this is the windsor and newton what are you called pale rose blush So you can see how that looks and of course you can always, I mean this is gouache, so there you go, see how it looks watered down. Now I'll show you the um, fluorescent magenta from Golden, love it. I really really love this color so this is a magenta they have another like fluorescent pink or fluorescent opera this is the magenta and it's my favorite because it's a bit deeper and not so garish just my personal personal opinion and then let's do the light ultramarine blue they have a few of these like lighter colors so this is just like a lavender it's exactly what I wanted exactly what what I expected very standard color um, and very easy to mix for yourself. But now Golden has also a ready-made version for us um, fans of convenience. Okay, so next, the white I'm not gonna swatch again because it's just white. Next is another um, restock. I got two of these because I absolutely love this color. Almost out of it. This is from Holbein. This is Acrylic Wash. And the color is Ice Green. Which, if you like this color, they also have it in uh, pencils. Which I love. It's one of my favorite pencils. And it's just to me like the perfect mint. Again, it's like a unique color. You can mix this, but I don't find it to be as easy as this. Although probably if you found like the right shade of like Viridian or something of that sort and add white to it, you would get something like this. But I feel this one is like much easier to mix. And this one is just a little bit harder. And I also love how opaque it is and really, really smooth. Um, there's just something very satisfying about using this color. I'll show you the pencil. This is the pencil. And if you are an oil painter, they also have this color in oil. Sadly, I was hoping they would have it in their regular uh, acrylic heavy body paint or even their acrylic inks. They don't. I don't remember if they have this in regular gouache. I don't think so because I would probably have it if they did. So I got two of these. Sadly, these are like, as far as I know, the largest tubes you can get of this, which is super, super annoying and I don't understand it. These are only 20 milliliters. So if you paint like large canvases, it's really annoying. And then the last one I got, this was also um, after seeing uh, Sandy Hester recommended again from Holbein 
acrylic wash. This is ivory white. And I, I have been using a lot of like cream colors. So I thought it would be nice to try. So you can see ivory white. Uh, another color, if you're on a tight budget and you want better value, this doesn't have a matte finish. Uh, but I think the color, now that I'm seeing that pale ivory, I think the color is quite similar. And I think, I think this <laughs> costs kind of as much as this. Well, maybe a little bit more, but you know, here you're getting 250, <laughs> so like 10 times, 12 times more paint. Uh, and it's not 12 times more expensive, but yeah, you can see it's, it's not identical, but it is quite similar. I would say this one is a little bit more yellow. And this is not matte finish. So I think it's nice in sketchbooks, especially to use these because they're nicer to sketch on top of. Um, they're not perfect like the flash paints when it comes to adding mixed media on top. The flash paints for me just have the best formula for that, but uh, they are nice. And I think, you know, the I'm trying to <laughs> see the advantages of these tiny tubes is that you can take them with you, uh, which I hope to do. I don't know, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with painting outside of my studio. I really would like to, um, because I just, I feel like it's a good exercise as an artist, even though I don't paint realistic scenes, that's not where my heart is. But uh, I think it's a good exercise to just observe and sketch and explore. And it just always looks like such fun to do that outside of the house, but I, I don't know, somehow find myself preferring to do other things when I leave the house. <laughs> so that is what I got from my little uh, haul. So it's all kind of, well, not all, but some of it is restock and then a couple of new to me things. This was a restock. And then this one, this, I'm excited about this, about the lavender. It's really, really pretty. It's actually, it has, I'm just looking at the finish because the finish is so important to me. I don't like these high glossy paints. Um, this one looks really nice. I think it would be, uh, also it would work well to sketch on top of it, which is really something I do in almost all of my paintings. So let me show you what I've been painting and who I'm inspired by and also um, why I need so much inspiration right now. So I've been away from home and then I came back and my kids had a vacation and I just kind of got out of the habit of painting every day. And I think like many other people, I struggle to get back into things. And so it helps me to be inspired by others. Sometimes, you know, really copy certain ideas, but I always find that the more I work on it, the more my own preferences emerge. And so I kind of just lean into it and try to be very aware of what works for me and what doesn't. So these few pieces are very much inspired by Betty Franks. I've mentioned her before and she's been posting more videos, which I'm very grateful for, um, like free videos on her YouTube channel. And she also has two classes that um, I highly recommend. She has like one larger course and then a smaller course, uh, which I recently purchased just because I want to support her so if you want to check her out, I highly recommend it. She's fantastic. And she does these abstract paintings that are very, very colorful. As usual, I'm all about the color. And just her process is really fun. Now, I have found that if I really kind of follow her process, I don't like the result, like for me personally. And of course, 
I'm really all about developing my own style. Uh, but I always find it's a good place to start if you're feel feeling lost, if you are struggling with getting started doing something, then it's a good crutch to lean on. The more I do this, the more I can figure out what I like and take those elements. So I'll kind of show you, I think, the evolution of that, kind of talk you through this, but I wanted to make it very, very clear that these are all inspired by Betty Franks and her process. Um, and hopefully you'll see how kind of my style comes into play as I use her methods as a crutch when I'm lacking inspiration. This was just a piece, like, this is a starting point. There are a lot of things here that are not working for me, but also a lot of things that are. So one of the things that, you know, let me show you like another a piece that I did inspired by her. So this was kind of following her process a bit more like true to her process. And this is like really fun and I love the colors, but I have come to realize that when I try to create things that are very colorful, where the colors kind of repeat themselves throughout the piece, I don't like the result as much, like for me personally, in my artwork. And so you'll see one of the things that I'll show you is how I developed that into doing more of the tone on tone work that I absolutely love to do. Also, another thing that I feel like I need to work on that I seem to struggle with is that I tend to kind of repeat the same marks over and over again, like the same marks with the same size and kind of they look the same. And um, it is fun as I'm doing it and it's very, very therapeutic and very enjoyable, but I don't like the result. So definitely something I'm trying to pay attention to is to vary my marks. Um, there aren't a lot of marks that I like. So it's usually also like ja just dash lines and some circles and that's kind of it. And I think Betty also doesn't have like a ton, a ton, a ton of like different marks. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I absolutely love her work and everything she does really. Her paintings are lovely. So, but th this is definitely something like a note to myself. And also I see with this piece, for example, there's not a lot of like pencil work, which I really like that look. I like that added sketchiness. So this is another example of just like, you know, leaning on someone else's process and using it as a crutch, but, um, but then trying to like figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah, I didn't do uh, anything of this style. So this one, I just uh, put down like a couple of layers, mostly using leftover paint. So that's always a good place to experiment. And I'm using, I wanted to show you this paper, which I'm really, really loving right now. This is by Hanne Mule. They have a few papers from their bam bamboo series. I don't like their watercolor paper for watercolors, but the mixed media one for mixed media. <laughs> so mostly acrylics for me, sometimes a little bit of watercolors, but mostly acrylics. I really love this paper. And for me, it's easy to find. And I think they also have sketchbooks. No, I think their sketchbook is actually for the bamboo sketch paper. So they have three, bamboo watercolor, bamboo mixed media and bamboo sketch. Um, and the mixed media is my favorite, but the sketch one is really good for sketching, uh, especially if you do mixed media. It's just, it's thin, so it'll work well in a sketchbook. They have it also in a sketchbook, but you can make your own sketchbooks. And I like it. I have it and I've used it um, quite a bit in recent months. So I can also recommend that one for sketching. But this one is really nice for mixed media and I really like it. You can see it buckled a little bit. This had uh, more moisture, but it's a nice paper that I'm enjoying. So, and then this one was also, this is kind of a dumping ground for leftover paint. You can see sometimes, sometimes you should really just let the paint dry on your palette and let it go before you put a paint you don't like on your painting, even though this could be an interesting layer. So this is kind of where paints go to die. 
um, which I also recommend doing if you think you'll come back to it. If you don't, if, like me many, many times, if you just lose interest with things, then, you know, maybe it's not even worth it. But I think, I think actually with this one I see potential. If I come in with a lot of white. Okay, so this was the next level. And I think here you can already see, right, a little bit more of like my signature color and color stories. So here, what I like about these pieces, again, very, very much inspired by Betty Franks. It's very important to me to give her the full credit. But you can see that this is already more tone on tone. So for example, like all the blue is concentrated here and here. There is not really maybe like a tiny bit of different colors making appearances. Let me get you a bit closer. So sometimes some colors will make a guest appearance somewhere in the painting, but for the most part, you can see the things are concentrated in certain areas and that is a lot more truer to my aesthetics. In Betty's work, whatever she do, whatever she does works for her, but when I try to do what she does, it doesn't work for me and it becomes uh, too messy. So I'm not very good at controlling the mess, so I do need some kind of guidelines. And the earlier I set them in my pieces, which in this case would be colorful areas, the easier it is for me to paint and create something that I like at the end. So it's not just about the process, even though the process is a huge, huge part of it, because if I'm not enjoying it, then what's the point? It's also about making pieces that I love and that are more uh, authentic to me. You can already see what I'm talking about, right? You have here, I think it's clearer than here. The reason probably is because this um, wood, this is a wood panel and I think I'll buy a few more because I absolutely loved working on it. So here I actually had um, a layer that I started that had a lot of pink in it. So I think that's why there's kind of more pink showing through than here where I just started on this like untreated wood. I didn't even gesso it. Maybe I should, but um, you can still see it peeking here. Yeah, I think that's the only place that it's peeking a bit here maybe. So you can already see this one has more pencil work, which I love. I'll show you like close up. It has like colorful pencils kind of all throughout like these, they're just like a lot of sketchy lines with pencils and I absolutely love that. And the edges are also painted, which is really fun, meaning you also don't have to frame these pieces. You can hang them as they are, uh, which I love. So this was already developing into my own voice. The pinks here has kind of this flow of colors. It's kind of rainbowy. You can see here it goes from like the blues to purples to pinks. Then we have like the peachy colors, yellows, and then it goes into the turquoises. And here it goes like this, right? You have the purple, pink, orange, yellow, then green, mint, um, teal, and then going back into the blues. So hopefully you can see kind of the evolution of this and these pieces are already making me super happy and I want to do like 20 more and just really lean into my um, color sensibilities and just tone on tone work. And then this, I had this, um, this is like a gesso board. I don't think it's as fun to work on these like it is on the wood panels. There's something about working on the sides. I also find it very enjoyable. Um, but this is what I had on hand and I decided instead of, you know, just going out and buying things, just use what I have. So originally I actually bought these to use with oils and there is actually no reason why I could not add oils on top of this. Maybe something to consider and try, but I'm kind of happy with this. I think maybe it needs a little bit of black, but I probably won't go with black paint, but rather black pencil. Um, so you can see this is already, I hope you can see kind of the, the 
leaning less on that crutch and kind of venturing more into my style. So again, we have here like color blocks, right? The colors don't repeat themselves much in the painting with the exception of like a little bit of pink here maybe when this is the main pink area. So you can see how this happens. And here I used a lot more inks. It's a lot messier. There are less of these mark makings where in the first pieces it was full, full, full of these marks. Uh, so here they're just a bit less, a bit more intentional. You can see I still have like some repetition with the same kind of marks and the same size. Uh, so probably I should work on that, like maybe here they could be bigger or something of that sort. Um, but it's definitely more developed and more true to me. And it has a lot of like splatters. I'll just show you close up. It's like such a fun piece to look at and see like all the different layers and everything that's going on. I could probably go in with pencil. I didn't get really to that stage. I was mostly working on these layers. This is mostly done with inks. And I think it actually would be fun now to show you my favorite inks, because who doesn't like a good um, swatching session? So it's a good opportunity to talk about the inks that I like. I just find it enjoyable on this particular um, surface, like these gesso boards. Uh, these are from, what are they called, Ampersand. They're lovely. What I don't like about them is you really need to kind of have these specially framed. Like, I, I wouldn't know how to frame these myself. So, I don't know. Um, I guess Ampersand maybe makes some frames, especially for this, but I don't really have these available to me in, like, shops where I can actually see them, so I would have to order it. I don't know. Anyway, really, really like this piece, and now I'll show you kind of my favorite um, acrylic inks and paints. So if you are interested, I'll start with, let's do this by color groups. And if I have, <laughs> you'll see that sometimes I have kind of a few colors in the same color group, which could be redundant, but sometimes I just like having variations with a specific color. So this one, this is Holbein's Nickel Azo Yellow. And I love the consistency of these. These are like inks. Then I have this one from Da Vinci. This is Fluid Acrylics, um, which I'm less of a fan of. There are more, there are less uh, fluid than the inks and the high flow. So formula wise, I really prefer to work with inks, just personal preference, um, but you know, you do you. So this color is transparent raw sienna. This color is marigold from Holbein. And then this one is also a favorite of mine and I can't seem to um, reduce these to less colors. This is from Golden Fluid Acrylics, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. So if I could, like I, I'm gonna use these because they're so expensive, but if I could um, like go back or replace these, I would get the high flow. I don't know if they have this color in the high flow formula, but that's just like my a favorite formula, but you can see the color. So the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold is a very, very kind of earthy orange, really pretty color. And then this one is the Nickel Azo Yellow from Holbein. And it's just this very earthy yellow. I also have this color in watercolors. I use it a lot. Then we have the Transparent Raw Sienna. I think it's a lovely um, raw sienna. This is from Da Vinci. 
And then the last color, which I've used quite a bit recently, this has been my favorite. This is called Marigold. I would say this is from Holbein. They also have it in the heavy body uh, acrylic. So if you're interested in that, this is like an Indian yellow, new gamboge type of color. I think, yeah, the camera is kind of true, but a very, very, you can see like a very, very, it's basically orange or like a yellowy orange. Uh, but I love it and I love it with this. Like this is a combo that makes me very, very happy and all the mixes are also pretty. So those are my favorite yellows right now. Now with pinks, as I said, I once I fall in love with like a super vibrant pink, I really struggle to use any other pinks. Uh, so we'll see. And with inks especially, you might think that they are more vibrant when they're wet and then when they dry, many of them just completely lose the vibrancy and just become sad pinks, like I said. But this one has survived all of my decluttering. So we'll see. This is from Schminke. Um, also their acrylic inks, which are beautiful. Uh, I've been using like their white acrylic ink like forever. I have a big bottle and I use a ton of it and it really seems to not run out. So this is called Primary Magenta. It is transparent and it's a good primary to have, but <laughs> problem is when you put it, like my problem, as someone who loves vibrant colors, when you put it next to something like this, it just looks really, really sad. So this is the fluorescent magenta from Golden. And then I have these two kind of convenience colors, which I really, really like. So these are also inks from Amsterdam, also a great option. Uh, so, you know, check around, check prices, but I love the formulas of all the inks that I mentioned here. Um, Holbein, the High Flow Golden, Schminke is excellent, and this is from Amsterdam Royal Talents. So I have these two colors. This is Quinacridone Rose Light, this one. And this one is light rose. And these are totally convenience colors. I think it's probably the same. Yeah, it's the same pigment. This one also has like another pink in it, but I'll show you. I especially like the lighter one and I have the same in the kind of heavier body. Paint used a ton of it recently. So this one is the light Quinacridone Rose Light. And then this one is the rose, light rose, sorry, light rose, quinacridone rose light. And both are opaque. And I don't know, I'm really enjoying opaque colors, opaque inks. So you can see, this is very, very light. And then this one is also light, but a bit darker. So these are the pinks. And you can also see like how sad they all look next to this one but i still use a ton mostly if i had to choose two i would stick with the light rose and the golden magenta i would probably be fine with these two so those are the pinks now the i think yeah i have two purples that i really like and this one is my favorite this is again from golden some of these colors are not very unique, but this is a unique color to me. I haven't been able to find something similar. And then this one is also a unique color. So this is from Golden, Fluorescent Violet. Love it, love to mix it with white also. And it's just, you can see it's quite a pinky violet, like I like. And it's very, it's, I wouldn't say it's like super fluorescent, but it's very bright, which I love. And then this one is from Liquitex ink. This is called Deep Violet. And it's a beautiful color and it's a beautiful dark. So I'm not a huge fan of like black ink or like dark gray. So when I can find interesting dark colors, I'm very happy and I think this is a good 
example. Oh, what I forgot to show you is this one. It's again kind of a unique color. I haven't been able to find much. It's not exactly like I would love. What I would like to have is actually an ink in this color, like the more luminous red. And this one is a little bit more orangey. It's called Neon Orange. This is by the house brand of my local um, art store. So I don't know. I, they have branches in Germany and Austria. I don't know where else. I'm not a huge fan of anything about this ink, not the packaging, not the formula, uh, but the color is unique in an ink form. In regular paint, you have a ton of these like fluorescent orange, fluorescent red paints. It's not so unique, but inks are not so easy to find. So I hardly ever use it as it is. I always mix it with white and pink or white and pink. <laughs> so, um, but I wanted to show you so this one is neon orange, it's called. Yeah, I really don't like it straight from the bottle. Okay, let's move on to blues. I have a few here and I'll show them to you, but honestly, I pretty much use exclusively ultramarine blue, which is my favorite blue in any medium. This one is from Holbein, but it's not a unique color. So you can find this, like pretty much every brand that makes acrylic inks, you'll find this color. Let me show you a few of the other blues that I have just so you can see. This one is Prussian blue hue. These are not all of my acrylic inks. This is like the already highly, highly curated a selection. So I just wanted to show you which ones I like to use. So this is Prussian Blue Hue and you can see it's just a little bit deeper than the ultramarine and a little bit more muted, kind of like a dark denim I would say. Um, I do use it sometimes, but not a lot. And then I also have the Thalo Blue Green Shade. This is a very very popular color I think for artists. I don't know, like I have, I'm not super attached to it, but it is very bright, very staining, and I'm not gonna do it now, or maybe I should, just to show you the different kinds of colors you could get when you add white. Let's do a bit, because why not? So this is the Schminke a white acrylic ink that I use. I love it. It's called Total Cover. It's very, very opaque, which is very important to me with white. I hate these like anemic whites. So let me show you what you get if you mix it with the phthalo. So you can see, you kind of get this light blue. It's pretty. I think a nice color for summer skies. And then with ultramarine, that's an easy one. You get kind of that lavender color, which I just bought. So that's what you would get. You can see it here. Very clearly, very easily, right? Lavender. So absolutely don't waste your money. If you're on a tight budget, or if you don't use a lot of this color, just make your own, like lavender, don't buy ready-made. And then here we have the what do you call the Prussian blue hue? And you can see this is a little bit more of like a muted blue. It's still pretty. So take a look, see which ones speak to you. Um, you know, hopefully this can help you decide which colors you want to add to your collection. Um, so this one I showed you, it's here. And then I have a few turquoises from Golden. This is teal. You have to shake this because, and even with shaking somehow I feel like it's not perfectly mixed. So this is teal. I wish it was just a little bit brighter, but it's still a lovely, lovely color. And also if you start mixing it with white, let's see, I'll grab some white here, you get really pretty aqua and teal shades. So hopefully you can see that. This with just a bit of white. 
Then I have this color, which I think is a convenience color also because it looks very similar to this. This is turquoise green from Amsterdam and this is opaque. You can see actually it's a little bit greener than the teal. I really like this variety in my paintings. Like that is important to me to have different shades of like mint, different shades of yellow. Um, but it's not so important to me with blue because I just really, really love ultramarine blue and lavender. So it's all about, you know, your personal preferences when it comes to color. So yeah, with this color, with the teal one, this is a super, super popular color and you'll see a lot of like mixed media artists use it. I like it, but I always feel like I have to tweak it a little bit and this one is just a really, really nice one and you can get this from Amsterdam. You can also get it in their like regular paint. Yeah, so turquoise green. So that's also the nice thing about Amsterdam. You can get it in ink, which is, and this one is opaque. I love that. And then you can also get it in just like a regular tube and it's also opaque. Oh, and then I have actually this color I sometimes use. This is from Liquitex. It's called turquoise deep. I don't love the Liquitex so much because of the bottles. I find they're like hard to open. So if you have any like arthritis or something like this, these can be annoying. Um, the plastic ones are much easier to handle, like the golden one and the whole Bind acrylic ink. So, and of course like these, but these are not as liquid, like as fluid as the inks and high flow. So I just wanna mention it in case, I know some of you have like health issues, so I just wanted you to know, um, you know, I usually get these open, but it's a little bit more annoying. This one is turquoise deep, and I think you can see it's like a deep turquoise. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. Let's take some white and see what we get. Yeah, so it also gives you really pretty, like aqua tones. Moving on to greens. I just have a couple. Greens are hard for me to find greens that I fall in love with. Um, but this one I absolutely love. This is greenish yellow from Holbein. I use it a lot. It's kind of like an olive green, green gold, that kind of shade. I love it. I also mix greens myself using the blues that I showed you and all the yellows that I have. So that helps me create greens that I like. But this is a shade that I always like. So greenish yellow from Holbein. And then this one is newer, so I haven't used it a ton. This is again from Amsterdam, and this is opaque, and this is called Olive Green Light. That's the color. So I would say it's less earthy and yellowy, but it is opaque. I would probably tweak it and not use it straight from the from the jar, but you can see the color. It's like kind of like a happy springy May green. I would probably add some yellow to it and play around with it. But yeah, that's those are the two greens that I currently use. And then I have just a few, like I have a black. I'm, there's, I can show you, I'll show you, but it's just, Black, this is from Liquitex. It is called Carbon Black. Does it say anywhere if this is? Yeah, this is opaque. It's just black. <laughs> I don't use a ton of black in my paintings. I find I tend to gravitate towards lighter values. So kind of like that high chroma look is just more my cup of tea. This one is shading gray. Where can I put it? Put it here. So this one also probably I had to shake a bit better. Um, here you can see the color, hopefully. Shading gray from Golden. And yeah, this is like the same pigment, like the black, carbon black. And you can see actually that it's transparent. It also says so, but it's like an okay um, gray, mid-tone gray to have. 
I don't use a lot of these colors and if I use gray I usually mix it with white and I kind of just like it as a lighter neutral and then another option this one is neutral gray 5 from Liquitax sometimes these get kind of gritty this so yeah it's lighter than the shading gray from Liquitex but you can see so this is probably more a color I would use but it's really really old and for some reason it has like this greetiness in it I can kind of get rid of it. But yeah, that's that's definitely more my color. But if you want to have versatility, if you want to like darken things or mute things, then these would probably be more versatile for you. But if if you're like me and you like more lighter values to paint with, then maybe um, this would work better for you. So these are all the inks that I'm currently into. Okay, and this is the last thing that I want to show you today. So this is the canvas that I'm currently working on. And again, I drew some inspiration from Betty's work. You can see already that it's a lot more divided with the colors, right? Again, what I was talking about. Um, I'm not happy with it. I feel like I need to work on it some more before I move it aside. But I just wanted to show you how, you know, all of the, these like ideas and patterns and marks and colors, everything can translate to larger scale, smaller scale. It doesn't always work so well. Um, I think with these techniques, I kind of enjoy the smaller paintings more. But, you know, it is still uh, inspiring and interesting and just like exploring what will come out of it. So I think I'll probably cover some areas here, like this area here, I think I'll just paint it mostly like in this color or like a light, a light yellow and kind of push back all of the things going behind it. And then I probably will do it to other areas as well that are a bit too busy, just like add some blocks of color. I don't know what will happen to this. You can see here it's it has less of all the like white and cream and I don't know how I feel about it. So it's it's kind of a bit too busy for me right now so somehow I need to kind of calm things down and I'm not sure how to do that. Maybe with white, maybe with like blocks of color. So we'll see. But again, this is like the same idea of just like going through these processes and and inspiration pieces and working through it and kind of making it your own. I just started like the first layer yesterday. This was covered, this is like this kind of again, this wood panel, it's really thick. I'm not a huge fan of like these super, super high sides. I think I prefer the slightly smaller ones, but I have this and I want to use it. I collaged on top of it some fabrics and then didn't touch it for months and months so I decided I will just put a layer of heavy gesso you can see this still I tried to remove the fabric and I couldn't really because I glued it so well so now there are these lines but it doesn't matter because it just adds uh, interesting texture you can see it just has all kinds of like interesting things. This is like heavy gesso, I think, most of it. So I just started it with some inky, inky work. <laughs> Let's call it like that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking forward to working on it. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen, but this is how it begins with this piece. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.